Google have said they're in their Gemini era and they've released a bunch of updates and announcements at Google I.O. Here's my live reaction to some of these announcements. People are always searching their emails in Gmail. We are working to make it much more powerful with Gemini. Now we can ask Gemini to summarize all recent emails from the school. Okay, this feature I like. Google are gonna summarize your emails and I think this is excellent. I built a GPT bot that did this. It would read all my emails that come in for the day, basically summarize them and then send it to me in a Google chat. And that's been working okay for a year. I also have a PA who helps me manage my emails, but this is a great feature and finally, makes Gemini worthwhile in the inbox. Previously, the only thing it could really do was help you respond to an email and you could cut and paste that email into the public version of what was Bard and is now Gemini and get a pretty decent response to reply to someone. Google allowing you to do this in the email with a full summary of all the emails is finally starting to get valuable enough that I might wanna pay for Gemini. I'm still waiting for the highlights feature to arrive in my Google Meet. I'm paying for a Gemini license, but it just doesn't seem to work yet. Now, the thing with this is Google have made the licensing a little confusing. They launched a product called AI Meetings add-on, and I still don't know if that's just referring to Gemini or not, or if I need to pay a separate subscription for that. Ask photos can also help you search your memories in a deeper way. For example, you might be reminiscing about your daughter Lucia's early milestones. You can ask photos, show me how Lucia's swimming has progressed. Here, Gemini goes beyond a simple search, recognizing different contexts, and photos packages it up all together in a summary. So this photos feature, I like. This is pretty impressive. In a business context, I can see this may be useful for someone who's snapping photos of work sites or work interactions, or maybe you've got a whole bunch of team photos and you wanna use this day to day. My dad is a builder and he will often use photos to basically take timestamps of when he starts and finishes certain jobs, if a contractor leaves or joins a work site, he might snap a photo to get a capture of the timestamp. Weird system, but boomers do weird things. I imagine my dad might use a feature like this to search for photos so he doesn't have to look up a particular date and maybe he can use it to find particular trends in photos or create a time lapse of a customer's progression of their house extension build that he could then present to a customer. Now, what I've noticed in my business is that we have a lot of photos of team events, catch-ups, company conferences where we fly everyone into the same city and all get together. Now, I would say that for our HR team, which we call our Empower team, it'd be useful for them to be able to grab maybe a summary of all the photos of one person and how they've progressed over the years working with our company when they're celebrating that person's birthday or a 10-year milestone. So this feature I like, and I can see it being used for business owners who've got a lot of photos for the business. We've been rolling out Gemini 1.5 Pro with long context and preview over the last few months. So today, we are expanding the context window to 2 million tokens. Hey, they're adding more tokens. That's great, but I don't know what tokens are. Are tokens characters? Because every time I dump a full meeting transcript into Gemini, it says, sorry, computer says no. So I'm hoping it can at least handle a cut and paste with 10 or 20,000 characters from a document now. Please. So far, we have talked about two technical advances, multimodality and long context. Each is powerful on its own, but together they unlock deeper capabilities and more intelligence. But what if we could go even further? That's one of the opportunities we see with AI agents. I think about them as intelligent systems that show reasoning, planning, and memory, are able to think multiple steps ahead, work across software and systems, all to get something done on your behalf, and most importantly, under your supervision. Ha, here we go. Google want to build an everyday AI agent that can be useful in everyday life. Wait, doesn't that sound like the Google Assistant? Oh yeah, that's right. It's been around for years and they launched it and then never improved it. And it's just one of those googly things where they build something and then it kind of just gets left and the rest of the competition steamrolls right past them. Anyone remember Google Hangouts in chat? Google had a pretty rudimentary chat program, but then they just never improved it. Google Hangouts themselves, the video calls, sucked for a long time. The quality was terrible. And when COVID happened, well, because Google Meet had only just been created and rewritten and relaunched, well, everyone just went to Zoom because Hangouts had such a bad reputation of a poorly implemented 
and poorly improved product, well, there was just never really anyone who wanted to go the Google way. They were sick of it. Everyone went to Zoom. Here's the challenge with the modern Google. We have applications that are launched and Google puts them out to the market and understandably Google wants to just let them build themselves naturally they want to get the user base built naturally but the problem is that because Google cancels so many products people are less trusting of going all in on the Google ecosystem and that means that less people are probably going to try out Google applications and Google products unless there is a compelling reason to and without a good feature it just means that well why would you if there are other tools that are out there at your disposal that rings true for gemini at least for me personally i have chat gpt and i find myself using that for anything complex that i just can't get done with google the reason for that is i'm going to use google as much as possible we're a google partner we promote google and i want to make sure that i know exactly what its capabilities are so i can speak with authority to share with our community here where it's good and where it's not so good. But I find that every time I go to ask Gemini to do something and it just can't get it done, and then after two or three queries, I give up, go over to GPT, which gets it done instantly on the first request, I find myself losing faith in Google's tools in general. And I have to scoff and I also get a little bit angry when I see that Google will re-release a product and re-pitch me a product that it developed and released years ago and then didn't touch or improve. The other problem I have with this is Google are talking about yet another prototype, yet something else that's coming along in the future. And some of these promises just don't come to fruition. I really don't like Google's current habit of telling us about features that are coming that just don't land. I really love that companies like Apple will announce a product and in many cases say, this is available today, or this is available on this date. Google just can't seem to do that for us. So when they do make a promise, they're pushed back and delayed and just sometimes kind of fade away into irrelevance. Unfortunately, that leaves me with the feeling that I can't trust Google's product launches anymore and I'm just gonna wait and see what happens. And that's the worst thing for a technology buyer. If I'm in wait and see mode, then I'm not leaning into purchasing your product and I'm not leaning into purchasing licenses for Gemini. Project Astra. For a long time, we've wanted to build a universal AI agent that can be truly helpful in everyday life. Here's a video of our prototype, which we'll see has two parts. Each part was captured in a single take in real time. What does that part of the code do? This code defines encryption and decryption functions. It seems to use AESCBC encryption to encode and decode data based on a key and an initialization vector, IV. This is some kind of weird parallel universe that looks like corporate hell. Can you imagine a boss walking around with a mobile phone pointing at your computer and saying, what does this thing do? <laughs> like, what the, what the hell is that? That's some office space shit right there. I'm not, I'm not down for that. I mean, they could have found a better example for this, surely. I don't know what I'm watching here. Do you remember where you saw my glasses? Yes, I do. Your glasses were on the desk near a red apple. Uh, give me a band name for this duo. Golden Stripes. <laughs> nice, thanks Gemini. Okay. That's cool. Also a little bit creepy. How long is it keeping in memory everything that it has seen? Like, is it everything? <laughs> or is it just that session? That I like. Object recognition, natural language processing, very impressive technology. Do I have to have my phone out 24 hours a day for it to tell me where I left my glasses? I don't know. That just seems a bit weird. This kind of reminds me of the feature where you could open up Google Maps and like point it down the street at a bunch of different restaurants and it would give you the ratings for those restaurants. That is a very cool like augmented reality type tool and was very impressive use of a number of different Google technologies. Image recognition, natural language processing if you're uh, you know talking to your assistant at the time, it's obviously pulling from their vast data bank of ratings of different restaurants and it's using your location to bring those up in real time. The thing is I've never found myself using that feature. If I am in a new city or a new town and I decide I want some ice cream, I'm gonna open up Google Maps, I'm gonna type in ice cream, I'm gonna look for the best rated ice cream and I'm gonna use the directions to walk there. I doubt that I'm on a street and I decide, let me have the best restaurant out of these four restaurants that happen to be in front of me right now when I could expand my search 
with you know a one kilometer radius and then just walk there so this is another one of those features where that is very impressive to see I just don't know if I see myself using it. When I watched the OpenAI demo and I saw a little black dot that I could just talk to, I thought, huh, maybe this can help me with my Spanish lessons because if it speaks multiple languages, I can probably have a conversation with it and it's going to be able to help to teach me. I don't look at this Google demo and immediately think of how or where I'm going to use this. And I think that's a problem. Today, we're introducing Gemini 1.5 Flash. Flash is a lighter weight model compared to Pro. It's designed to be fast and cost efficient to serve at scale, while still featuring multimodal reasoning capabilities and breakthrough long context. I don't know why Google has all of these different versions of Gemini. Gemini Pro, Gemini Flash, Gemini 1.5. I'm still trying to get my head around what's the difference between Gemini on my Gmail account and Gemini on my Google Workspace account. If you know, you know, maybe you can tell me in the comments, but Google almost seemed like they're trying to manufacture hype with these new versions, but I have had so many different versions thrown at me, I just feel confused. We started with Bard, and then we went to Duet, and then we went to Gemini, and we've got this weird dance of like, if I use Gemini in the browser with my business account and I've paid for a license, I might get a different experience if I use Gemini in the browser under my Google Workspace business account and I haven't paid for a license, but I don't know what those differences are. And who knows which one is Pro or which one is Flash. Anytime I use Gemini, it still can't seem to give me a picture. And it's still giving some people, you know, pictures of like Black Hitler. So what is the point of releasing all of these different features when, you know, Google really just need to make this a compelling product? And I implore Google, please just catch up, just focus on catching up. Don't try and dazzle me with different version names and different variants because all you're doing is confusing me now. Teach me how I can use this for my business and teach me how this is useful for me and then maybe I'll pay more attention. Today, I'm excited to announce our newest, most capable generative video model called Vio. Vio creates high quality 1080p videos from text, image and video prompts. It can capture the details of your instructions in different visual and cinematic styles. I'm very excited about generated content and where it's going. And I think Google have the compute power to make this work really well. Is this better or more exciting than what we're seeing with other large models? I don't know. Are Google gonna be able to differentiate themselves with this? I don't know. I do like that I can use, for example, a prompt inside Google Meet or Google Slides to generate an image that I can add to a slide in my presentation when it works but I don't see super excitement in Gemini versus GPT and much differentiation here with Google. If GPT has given me a tool that can do 80% of what Google can do, well, maybe I'll just choose to use Google instead. Trillium delivers a 4.7x improvement in compute performance per chip over the previous generation. Google search is generative AI at the scale of human curiosity and it's our most exciting chapter of search yet. You know what's interesting about AI overviews and the whole AI-fication of search is that anyone who's right now generating leads through organic blogs, search, and search engine rankings is gonna see that entire business shift and effectively be upended in the coming years. I would say as much as possible considering podcasting considering producing video, considering producing more long form content and putting more information out there, because the more that these models ingest, they're gonna look for the authority and depth of content, which is sometimes probably gonna include quantity. We found that in our searching, when we started asking things like, who's the best workspace partner for small businesses around the world for Google Workspace? It returned IT Genius, probably just because I've got the most videos on YouTube around Google Workspace. And that was interesting because we've never ranked super highly on our website. So I expect we're gonna see some pretty big changes with this in the coming years. Now, I'm not an SEO expert, but I would recommend you consider what your strategy is if this is something that's important to you. Since last May, we've been hard at work making Gemini for Workspace even more helpful for businesses and consumers across the world. Now, 
I can simply type out my question right here in the mobile card and say something like, compare my roof repair bids by price and availability. This new Q&A feature makes it so easy to get quick answers on anything in my inbox. Now this I'd love to see more of. I love the idea that Google is starting to bring business intelligence out of my inbox and frankly can help me manage my business information knowledge tasks. This is what large language models, they're supposed to help augment what we would normally do with our brains. And if you're an executive or a manager or a business owner, you're technically probably a knowledge worker. You're the person who's organizing and arranging and managing other people, managing resources, managing tasks. And if you've got a hundred things in your inbox and you need to know which are the most important ones, being able to ask an assistant and have them display that information and display that media for you and even help with some of the analysis is a big thumbs up from me. Yes, yes, yes to more of this Google and please bring it out quickly. Otherwise, third-party applications are gonna fill that gap. We're rolling out a new feature that lets you customize it for your own needs and create personal experts on any topic you want. We're calling these gems. They're really simple to set up. Just tap to create a gem, write your instructions once, and come back whenever you need it. So this GEMS feature is pretty interesting to me. It sounds a little bit like the GPT's GPT's. I wanna know what's Google's spin on it? Where can Google do something that maybe GPT can't? Can a GEM automatically read every single document in my Google Drive and tell me about my business? That would be great. Can a GEM read every single email in my inbox ever? There's 600,000 emails in there that would be excellent as well. Well, I look forward to seeing a version of Gemini in my account that can actually handle what I cut and paste into it and not screw up. Starting today, Gemini Advanced subscribers get access to Gemini 1.5 Pro with 1 million tokens. That is the longest context window of any chatbot in the world. You can upload a PDF up to 1500 pages long or multiple files to get insights across a project. Now we can upload PDFs. Thank you, Google. Can you please work with uploading zip files, uploading CSVs without crashing or breaking or saying, sorry, can't help with that. I'd really appreciate it. I'm excited to introduce LearnLM, our new family of models based on Gemini and fine-tuned for learning. Another example is a new feature in YouTube that uses LearnLM to make educational videos more interactive, allowing you to ask a clarifying question, get a helpful explanation, or take a quiz. I love the idea of LearnLM, and I love the idea of these helpers helping us to extract the information that's on the internet, the information that's out there in the world and helping it to drive humans forward. I really can't wait to get my hands on this because I know this is something that if you are consuming our videos here on this channel, it'll make your experience even better. Maybe you don't have to watch a 12 minute video and you can just automatically grab the bullets built right into your YouTube app or into whatever app you're using in your Google workspace that's gonna help you with this. Stay tuned for more updates as these features actually roll out to my account and I'll share with you more on the channel when that happens. If you liked this video, we've got plenty more on the channel covering this topic and much, much more.